Let's learn how to create an array of objects and then search that array for a specific value. I'm going to go ahead and create a brand new project, file new project, console application, and we'll call this search array and click on the OK button. Now we want to go ahead and come over here and create a brand new class, add class, and we're going to call this class student. And we're going to go ahead and add uh, some attributes. We'll make that um, a private string name. And we'll go ahead and make a private int age. And since they're private, we're going to go ahead and write a couple getters and setters. So we'll say public string get name and the whole job of that get name is going to return the name and then we'll write a setter public void set name and we'll receive a value we'll call it s value you can call it anything you want and we'll say name equals s value there's my getter and setter for the name then let's do the same thing for the age. I'm going to go ahead and just copy this, paste it, and we'll call it get age. Spell correctly would help. And this will return the age, and that's going to be an int. It says return an int, call it age, and then this will be set age. We'll receive an int. We'll call it i value age is equal to i value. So there's the getter and setter that are public for those two attributes. And that will allow me to create objects. Now that we have those, let's come back over to our program and let's create an array of student objects. So we'll first specify the class name, AO student equals null. We'll initialize it and we'll create another variable called i size. Then we're going to prompt the user to say how many students. And then we'll go and get that from the keyboard by saying convert dot to int 32 of whatever we get from the console read line. So this will go and prompt and then get the data, turn it into an int, store it there. Now, as long as i size is greater than zero, we want to go ahead and let's size that array by saying AO student equals new student array and we give it the size. So that will now create the array for our student object. Notice it's upset at us, and that's because we didn't come up here and specify that it's going to be an array. So that says make an array of students, call it that, set it to null. This says now let's go ahead and create the new array of type student, and we'll make it the number of whatever they type in. Now that we have that number, let's go ahead and load up some information about it. So we'll say for int i count equals zero, and as long as i count is less than the length of the array. Notice that length is an attribute, not a method. I count plus plus, and then in this loop, we're going to say enter the name, and we want to go and get that name. Let's go ahead and create a couple variables up here string s name int i age. We'll use those to hold some data. And we say s name is equal to console.readline. And this will get the data from the keyboard and store it to name. And then let's do the same thing and grab the age. So we'll say enter the age. This will be i age. And we'll have to go ahead and convert to int 32 of whatever we get from the keyboard. Now, we think that we already have objects created because we said, hey, let's go ahead and make this array of that size. 
But you have to remember, this simply builds the array. It doesn't put anything in it. It, it more or less says, let's just go allocate a, a plot in our yard that someday we're going to build a shed. We still have to build the shed. So right here I can say AO student bracket I count is equal to the new student object. This will now create a student object and put it in position zero of that array. Next time through, create a new student object, put it in position one of the student array, and so forth until we've hit the length of whatever they typed in. We went ahead and uh, called or stored these values to some variables. We need to load up the contents of that array. Now there's many ways to do this. One way is simply instead of creating new variables, you can just set the object. Another way is we could have said AO student bracket I count. So let's go and get the object in that position of the array. And let's do a set name. And we want to pass it whatever we stored in the name variable from the keyboard. So this will now go out to the object in the array and set the name attribute. Remember over here, here's our set name. It receives a value and then assigns it to the attribute. So whatever we pass it will go into here and then we assign that value to the name attribute. Let's do the same thing with the age. And so we we'll declare that variable and would we'll set say age, set age and then let's pass it a value. By the time I'm done, I've now loaded up the name and the age for that object. And this will continue to happen for the length of the array. We create an object, load it into the array, and then load up the attributes. Once the array is loaded, now we want to go search for something. So let's say, who do you want to find? And let's go ahead and use that s name variable again. And we'll say console.readline. And so the user will type in a name that we want to search for. Now, how do you search an array? One way of searching for an array of objects, you just look at every object. So let's go ahead and use that same for loop that we used up top. We'll say for int i count equals 0. And as long as i count is less than, the length of the array, and then we'll increment I count. And so you're going to stay in this loop as long as this counter is less than the length of the array. Now we want to check and see if the student object, so that object in position zero, let's go and get the name. So we'll go out and grab the value of the name, and let's see if it equals whatever the user typed in right there. If it is equal to it, then we know we found the name. And so we can just print it all out. We can say, let's just print off AO student, I count, get name method, let's concatenate as an age of AO student, I count, get age. Make sure you have a semicolon there. So this will now go and say, if we found it, if that object has a name that equals whatever they typed in from the keyboard, then we'll go ahead and print off the name plus that string plus the age for that object. Now, we're still in the loop. So somehow we have to say we don't want to get out of the loop anymore, or we don't want to stay in the loop anymore. What keeps you in the loop? That does. So what we could do to get out of the loop is just say I count is equal to the length of the array. So the next time it comes up to this loop, it says is I count still less than? Nope, it's equal to the length, so it gets out of the loop. In fact, let's do this. Let's add plus 1 to it. So now we know that 
The way we got out of this loop is because I count is one past the length of the array. That means I could come down here and say if I count is equal to that value, remember equal is a double equal, is equal to the length plus one, then what do we know? And that means we got out of the loop. Now the problem we have is we said I count was only visible for this array. So once we, or this loop, so once we hit the loop, that variable's dead. If we want to keep that value around, we actually need to come up top, and I'll get rid of it on both of those for loops. Do you see how I did that? I got rid of it on both of the for loops, and I created a variable at the very top called I count. Now I can keep that value. So when this loop is over, I'll keep the value, and I'll say if I count has a value that's equal to the length of the array plus one, then what do we know? Well, we know that we got out of the array just fine. We did find a value. If it's not equal to the length plus one, then we know that we got out of the loop because it checked every single element but never found it. In other words, we're using this to determine whether or not we found the record, that name in the, the list of the array of objects. If the count is not equal to the length plus one, we know we did not find it. So we could say CW not found. In fact, we could even uh, concatenate on the, the contents of that variable. S name is not found. And let's go ahead and right here we'll put a console dot right line so that we can pause it and get a good look of what's going on with the output. We'll console dot right line that and let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. So it should prompt me to see how many students we want to do. Let's do three students. First name, Greg, age 54. Second name, Marissa, age 24. Third name, Oli, age 1. Who do you want to find? Let's go see if we can find Oli. And it says, Oli has an age of one. Oli is not found. So what's happening there is we're saying somewhere this Oli is not found is working. We're saying is I count not equal to the length plus one. Let's see what happens on that. We were thinking what we could do is just say the length plus one to get us out of the loop. But remember, we're still in the loop. So what happens to I count after we say length plus one? we increment it. So really now it's length plus two. So if we just set that inside that if statement to say I count is equal to the, the array length, then it comes back up here, increases it by one, and now says, yeah, I count is not less than the length, it's really the length plus one. And so now if we ran it, I count should be equal to the length plus one. If you find it, and not equal to the length plus one if you don't find it. Let's run it one more time and see if that works logic-wise. How many students? Three. Greg, 54. Marissa, 24. Oli, one. Search for Oli. Oli has an age of one, so it found it. Let's try it one more time, and let's search for a name that is not there. Enter a name. Greg, 54. Marissa, 24. Oli, one, whoops, one. Who do you want to find? Let's go find Chewbacca. And it says Chewbacca is not found. Now, of course, what you'd want to do is go and clean these up and make them look really nice by adding more white space between each of those outputs. And that's really easy to do because all you'd have to do is add some slash ends to each of these to make it look really nice and pretty. And so if I ran it one more time, now we're gonna see it look just a little bit nicer. Three, Greg, 54, Marissa, 24, 
Holy One. So do we want to find Greg? Greg has an age of 54. And that's how you create an array of objects and how you can search that array of objects. Once again, the way I did it, first of all, we made a class with attributes that were private. Then we wrote getters and setters to access that class. And in the actual program, we asked for the size of the array they want to make. We declared the array up here, so just set it to null. Then we sized the array. And then in the for loop, where we load up all the data, we created a brand new object for each element of the array. We loaded up the attributes by calling methods. We asked for what they wanted to search for. We then did our loop again for the length of the array. And for each element, we went and used a method to get the name attribute and, and check to see if it was equal to whatever we typed in. If we found it, we displayed that object by calling methods. We set the count to be the length of the array, which increments to 1 plus the length. And then we said if the count was not equal to the length plus 1, and we know we didn't get out of the loop by finding it. And instead, we got out of the loop because the count was equal to the length. And that's how you can search an array of objects.